Kira, Carrie, congratulations on Boston Strangler. Um, let's go ahead and kick things off with the fact that this was before the son of Sam, before Ted Bundy, uh, Boston Strangler. I mean, this was a killer like no one had seen in the States up until that point. What can you tell audiences who may be unfamiliar with the cases? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think this happened 10 years before the term serial killer was coined. Um, so, you know, this is a it, it, it's a very early case, one of the first times that they were using psychological profiling. Um, I mean, it's a fascinating and horrific story. But really, for me, the most important part of this story is is that it was broken by two female journalists. Um, and so really, I think this love song, uh, this uh, this this film is a love song to uh, female investigative journalism and really highlights how important it is that you have women in positions of power when telling stories, because largely these murder, murders had been uh, ignored by the male establishment and it took two women to say what was going on to say how important it was and to get the message out to their communities that women in Boston needed to be careful um, so so you know it was a great privilege to tell a story about two such extraordinary journalists absolutely Carrie what would you add to that you know this takes place in the 1960s an extremely sexist time which mm -hmm. is not even to get started on 2023. Yeah. Um, so uh, what would you share when it came to the challenges that these women faced getting the attention of the police force with this case? What impressed you most about them? Well, certainly their, um, their tenacity in the face of threat. Um, you know, women at the time were not allowed to cover anything, but they were doing the advice columns. They were doing lifestyle columns, the toaster review, for example, or they were doing stunt, you know, stunt reporting like, oh, you're going to go to the county fair and do a special story. And so it was very unusual for women to cover crime. Uh, and these women, I mean, Jean Cole had been working undercover to expose elder care abuse in that system at a time when women really weren't doing that work. Um, uh, uh, they went on to become both award-winning journalists in their field when there still weren't that very many, many women working in it. I think the most shocking part of the story is that they're completely erased from the history of the Boston Strangler. They coined the term Boston Strangler. And when you hear the story or watch the movie with Tony Curtis, you never hear about that. Usually it's just uh, gratuitous violence against women and you have a male serial killer being pursued by a male cop. And this is just not the way the story usually gets told. And how in how many other stories have the women who were critical to that story been erased? Right. And we owe a responsibility to keep looking for those stories and to keep telling them. Right. Absolutely. Um, you both have families. How did you relate to, if at all, Loretta and Jean really pursuing this story, even at the great personal risk to their families? Well, I mean, I, I, I think as this isn't answering the risk question part of your question, but this is just saying, you know, I think part of the reason that I really wanted to tell the story was because I loved the uh, the fact that, that it really went into how difficult it is to be a working woman and a mother. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to say that that's changed, but I don't think it has very much. You know, I think one of the, the lovely things about working with Carrie was we're both mothers of two very young children. Um, and, you know, being able to go to work and, and see an ally and recognize in another woman's face that neither of us had slept the night before, but we had each other's backs was a really lovely thing <laughs> yeah it was a comfort, <laughs> was a comfort. Um, I'm curious to know uh, when was the first time that you two met first impressions of one another when the cameras weren't rolling what was it like between you two well, a lot of commiseration a lot of commiseration yeah. yeah a lot of oh dear do you need another coffee maybe another <laughs> yes, yes. another coffee uh I, I i i mean kira's work speaks for itself she's an extraordinary actor but i knew her by reputation from mutual friends as just a really lovely and grounded and generous human being and that all was all true mm -hmm. Beautiful. And Kira, there's a scene in the beginning where Loretta is fighting with her boss to get a chance to report on this crime. I'm curious, when each of you think about your careers, um, professionally speaking, especially, has there ever been a time when you had to fight for an opportunity uh, where you were seen as unqualified or mislabeled as unqualified? I think absolutely. I think for most young actresses, you know, they're 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 mislabeled as uh, as being unqualified. Um, and you know, and I think it's very easy for in every pro profession for young women to be discounted and for their intelligence to be questioned. Um, so you know, and I think it's been really interesting talking to women who've seen this film. The word cathartic keeps coming up a lot, which I think is interesting. And I think that's because even now in 2023, people are watching this and really understanding on a cellular level what these two women went through. Um, so yes, of course, I've experienced it as many other women, most other women have. 
Um, and I think it's our job uh, when we're in these positions of power to highlight these stories about women's struggles, um, but also their tenacity uh, and their resilience. And that it's possible for two women to support each other in that environment. I mean, so often you hear about the scarcity model that operated in these industries back in the 60s and now where it's like, we already have a woman. We don't need another one. And and it's, you know, Jean Cole, they, they were friends for the rest of their lives, you know, and they supported each other in their careers for the rest of their lives. And that story doesn't get told often, mostly because there's often just one woman in a movie anyway. So there's no one to be friends with. And so it's always good to tell the stories of like these women who were speaking out for other women. And as we know, um, there are certain communities where if, if these were women of color being killed in Boston, the story would not have been told at that time. And so we know we are still fighting these battles and we need to be advocates for each other. And that women, we can be friends and we can support each other. And that the more we share um, about our struggles, the better chance we have of overcoming them because we all know we're still fighting these battles now. Mm, absolutely. So true and beautifully said. Uh, before I let you two go, bit of a hard turn here and on a much lighter note, but Kira, it's been 20 years since Ben did like Beckham. What do you remember most about that time in your life? And what would you tell that younger self, something that you know now? Oh my goodness. Well, I was 16 when I <laughs> shot Bend It Like Beckham. So uh, what would I say to my 16 year old self? Good abs, good abs. Make some of those baby because they're not going to stick around for the whole of your life. Um, and I, do you know what I'd say? I'd give her a cuddle and I'd say, well done. You're doing really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, while I've got you, I mean, Carrie, maybe not Bend It Like Beckham, but your 16 year old self, what would you oh, tell God. her? Oh, no. Oh, I would no, just laugh. Hair. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, it's the thing I want all I want all to tell all the young women. I just want to be like, put on this big homely sweater. <laughs> and actually, what I would really tell them is, um, you know, we spend so much time when we're young people worrying about what other people are thinking about that we forget that that actually everyone's thinking about themselves and no one's thinking about you, which is such a liberating thing to remember. And if every young person could just understand that a little bit they would have a much easier time Ooh, great advice i'm 34 and i just got that memo oh, this man. year so. that's the decade though it's all come it's all coming together now it's all coming together <laughs> ladies thank you so much congratulations and we can't wait to watch